All right, Springboks Portugal has just wrapped up. These are my instant thoughts from the stadium. As you can see, it's turned into absolute chaos on the pitch. The security is kind of just letting people through because there were a couple of streakers. But 64-21, I don't think really paints the story of today's test match. The, the story coming in and what we expected as fans was a clinical dominant performance from the Springboks and I don't think we got that. I mean, it started in the second minute, Andre Esterhazen, head on head contact, gets sent off to the bunker and eventually gets a red card. So the Springboks basically played 78 minutes with 14 men against the Portuguese side that were very, very pumped up in sort of the first 15, 20 minutes. I mean, Portugal even scored first the stadium semi erupted because there's so many Portugal fans here. But I just don't think the Springboks were good enough today. We had got a red card, 78 minutes. The Springboks also picked up two other yellow cards. So we played with 13 men for 20 minutes as well. Kurt Lawrence for a crock roll. Um, and then Q and Horn also got a yellow card for sort of taking someone out in the air. Feel bad for him because it was his debut. He did score on debut. Um, but, I mean, not a great performance from the Springboks. I had a conversation with Ulrich uh, Lowe's dad beforehand, uh, before the game, and he said that this is a very, very difficult test match to play in because everyone's expecting us to pump the Springboks. It's very difficult to sort of have a very good performance, and even if you do, then it's just against Portugal. So there's not much to gain for these players from playing against Portugal in a test match like this. Now, in the first half, I thought... We made so many, so many silly errors. Um, I think a big talking point is going to be Marnie LeBoc and him missing quite a few kicks. I think it was three or four kicks, but I actually think Marnie had a decent 44 minutes while he was on the pitch. He created plenty of tries. He looked very, very good on attack. And yes, his kicking isn't there at the moment, but I still think Marnie is a very, very good attacking flyer. That it is going to be a talking point that Marnie LeBoc's kicking is potentially going to uh, push him down the ranks in that Springbok fly position because I mean you have someone like Sasha Feinberg and Gomezulu who comes on in the 44th minutes and he just looks like he belongs. He had such a good game. He slotted every single one of his kicks. I think he kicked four or five conversions. He had a brilliant 50-22, torpedo 50-22. He just looks like he controls the game and I wouldn't be surprised if Sasha Feinberg and Gomezulu is now second in line for that fly position. I still think Andre Pollard owns that jersey somewhat but I do think Sasha has potentially gone above um, Marnie LeBoc in that number 10 position. I feel so bad for Marnie because he's a brilliant fly off but this kicking narrative is going to keep hounding him. It's going to be, it's just going to chase him around and I just, it, it just is what it is. I mean as a fly off you have to kick your conversions. So yeah I don't think we were great in the, in the first half at all. I thought the forwards didn't look good. Akia Sneiman was in a couple of scraps with the Portuguese hooker. I don't know what that was about. No one really put their hand up in that first half. I thought also Kurbis Reinach, <coughs> sorry, I thought Kurbis Reinach also had a very slow, quiet first half. And you saw when Morning van den Berg came on and yet Sasha Feinberg and Bruno Zulu, it looked completely different. Morning van den Berg had a very, very good um, debut. I thought Kurt Lorenzo had a decent game and Pimpi scoring three tries. I mean, he just never has a bad game in a Springbok top. Lukanya Am, um, I thought played a very, very good game. He looks so good to see him back in a Springbok jersey. His defense in that 13 channel is off the charts. He created some very, very good opportunities. Um, who else impressed? From the forwards, I thought when the bench came on, I thought Ulrich Lowe had a very, very good game coming off the bench. Ben Jason Dixon had also a very, very good game, a standout game. Ivan Ruiz, I'm not too sure what to make of him at the moment because a lot of people are saying that he's quite an individual player. I didn't think he had a great game, also didn't think he had a, a, a bad game. It's just difficult to sort of gauge the players' performances against a team like Portugal. Like uh, Auric Lowe's dad says, there's not much to gain. I think the only person who really gained something was probably someone like Sasha Feyman and Gumazulu because you could see the shift in the momentum. He created a beautiful try on a counter-attack and then I think Mpimpi scored down here in this corner. So overall for the Springboks, yes, the scoreline looks impressive, 64-21. Yes, we played with 14 men for 78 minutes. Yes, we played with 13 men for 20 minutes, but I'm, I'm just not convinced about this performance. And yes, I get Rassi is trying to build the depth in the Springbok lineup. And you could see that this is sort of like a brand new team, seven debutants. Maybe we struggle to find a little bit of flow in that, in that first half. <laughs> but the more these players play together, 
the more we work on the system, the better it's going to get. But I definitely think the 9 and 10 at the moment is a massive, massive discussion. Faf also looked flat in the Ireland series. I thought Grant Williams was phenomenal in that Irish series. Kurvis Reinach, I'm not, I'm not going to say he performed badly. I just don't think he had a great game. It wasn't a standout game. Marnie Le Bork is obviously having his problems. Andre Pollard is our 10. Sasha Fainbrun Gumuzulu has put his hand up dramatically. I also thought the debutants in the front row, Jan Hendrik Vessel, had, had a very, very good game. He scored a try on debut. So did Kuhn Horn. But Jan Hendrik Vessel looks dominant in that forward pack. He gets over the game line. It, it, it's three, four tacklers to try and bring him down. I thought Jan Grobler had a decent debut as well for the Springboks. So I think the signs are good. Pepsi Butelezi as well. I mean, there was a kid behind us that was shouting Sia the whole time because he thought Pepsi Butelezi was Sia. But I thought Pepsi had a decent game. I mean, it wasn't a standout game, but he definitely didn't have a bad game. And I think he's just going to develop with time into that number six position. And like I said, Ben Jason Dixon in my preview, Ben Jason Dixon is our sort of like-for-like -like replacement for Peter Steff the toy. He can play seven, he can play lock. What was interesting though is when Ulrich Lowe came on, he slotted in at eight. I thought he was going to sort of be a utility flank lock position, but he came on at eight and he performed very, very well. I thought he performed better than Ivan Roos. I know it might be a little bit harsh to Roos, but I did think Ulrich Lowe had a very good game. And then the two locks, Salman Murat and Archios Neyman, there was a lot of chatter before the game about Salman Murat. Is he good enough? to play for the Springboks at this level. Can he captain the Springboks? Look, it's a difficult test match to come and captain first up. It's against Portugal. We're expected to absolutely dominate them. I don't think he had a bad game. Again, one of those guys that didn't have a standout game. Archeus Neyman, one man of the match. He's just that impact player that makes a difference. He gets through tackles, he offloads. I mean, he's just a freak of nature for the most part. So. A good performance, not a great performance. I think there's a lot to work on for the Springboks leading up into the Rugby Championship. I'm very, very excited to see who our team is for the Rugby Championship because there's a lot to decide for. There's so much depth within the Springbok lineup and it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. It's been a long, long three weeks. Loftus Island Test, Durban Island Test, and now we finished it off here in Bloom. Thank you guys so much for all the support over the last three, four weeks. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Things like this, we don't get to do without you guys watching. So I just want you guys to know that I'm extremely grateful for every single one of you that watches these videos. If you haven't, please make sure you absolutely more that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next week with some very, very cool content we've got coming on the channel. It's been good. I'm going to go sleep. It's been a long three weeks, but I'm so eager to get back into the swing of things. Take it easy, guys. Peace.